Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to this morning's study. Before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, we are so grateful once again to be able to come together to open the scriptures, uh, to look at the things that you have prepared for us. We know, Lord, in our personal study, you give many tokens um, of your leading and guidance. Um, we are thankful, Lord, for the witness of your spirit and the conviction and power that it provides in our lives. And now we see our need of you on a daily basis. We know, Lord, that you are leading in spite of what we see in our own lives. We can see that you are speaking to us, to each person, to those in this movement, and to those around us, and to those in the world that are seeking for truth. And we just ask, Lord, that you can continue to lead and guide. Uh, we pray, Lord, um, for this study. We know that there is much we don't understand, and we just ask that you can direct it and uh, that you can use us uh, to your glory. Help us to understand these truths. May your Holy Spirit uh, speak to our hearts. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> so we've uh, been picking our way through uh, Judges five for quite a while here um a lot slower than i imagined it would but part of this is just that i don't think i you know i know i don't fully understand what's happening but we had a much clearer picture yesterday as far as how to understand these verses uh, which are these verses going up to verse 31 and we had spent some time dealing with uh, the prancings and, and that was the verse that I had difficulty understanding what it meant, but I think we're clear now um, that these are the horse hooves of the enemy and these gallops are, or prancings, as it says, this, this patterning of their, their gallop, which is um, their methods of, of studying. Um, those are, are broken by this uh, river of Kaishan, this ancient river. While it's actually really, um, you know, the, they fought from heaven and stars in their courses fall against Sisera. So this is all referencing back to 11 9, 2019. And, and then there's this curse of Moroz. Um, and these are the ones who do nothing, right? They don't come to the help of the Lord. And we can see that this is um, what happens at 11.9, that there is uh, people who end up on the right side of the issue in one way, but when it comes to the message, this is... Uh, the message specifically of Deborah and Barak, they're not really in support of it. And that is, there is a message of Deborah and Barak that happens at 11.9. That is on November 9th, what we've learned is on November 9th, 2019, a message is presented to this movement. And that message has to do with chronology. Now we know that the movement accepts July 18, but it's not just about July 18. Right. July 18 is part of this message. On November 9th, we have a specific message regarding the 273 and its relation to the Mayan calendar. And Jeff is, of course, going to, um, as he presents his message, he's going to present uh, the Levitical chiasm. He's going to notice many, many things in connection with July 18. Now, his message focuses primarily upon July 18. But we know that the whole 777 structure has to end. And when it does end on December 25th, 2021, that we now have another message. Now, that message in this line, 
So I'll just go there again. So we have a line where we spent a lot of time showing that this line has a message that arrives on December 25th, 2021. That's going to be based upon Tanakh and Megiddo. Tanakh occurs seven times in the Bible. And the first three in Joshua, all very significant in that if we take the verses, 12, 21, and we multiply them, that's 252. 17, 11, you multiplied it, it's 187. Joshua 21, 25, you multiplied it, it's 525. So we know it's 252 days to July 18th from November 9th and 525 days to December 25th. And so that brings us to December 25th. And we can also multiply, or not multiply, but look at the verse there, 2125. And we can see that within that verse is contained the symbols of December 25th, 2021. And we also have it in Judges 127, which is a symbol for midnight. Um, <clears throat> so, and, the, and there's a few other verses, but these first three are the primary ones that give us that structure that leads us up to December 25th, 2021. So this is where a new battle ensues that is a repeat of history. That is the battle that happened with Sisera, Parminder's message. It occurs again in our history beginning on December 25th, 2021. And so the whole discussion, the whole idea is that on December 25th, 2021, we had um, the movement reject an invitation to study together to look at what God had showed us previously and to understand what December 25th, 2021 was about. So they rejected that invitation. We also have Stephen recognizing the 777 years, and um, that is from 457 to 321. And then we also have... Um, uh, Colin's message. So Colin presents uh, his understanding of Trump. But in there, he is presenting some important information that this movement should be looking at. And, and the problem there is that when we get to December 25th and Colin is presenting, and I come in late, I recognize that what Colin is presenting is true. And I see the type of opposition that he's facing as he's trying to present what he's presenting. Now, from my perspective, at least, when I saw what was happening, I came in, Colin, in with a support of what Colin was saying. That is, I broke it down to the basic ideas of what he was presenting. But I didn't agree with his conclusion because I saw that there was something that he didn't notice. That he was, because we had studied the foundation. And when we studied the foundation, we had noticed that the Millerites had made some mistakes. And those mistakes were mis mistakes that we were repeating, that we had repeated. We had done the same errors um, uh, in principle that they had made. So we could look at what, what the Millerites had studied and we could see where we had gone wrong not just dealing with, you know, uh, October 22nd, but even all the way through how they were interpreting the prophecies, especially the prophecies in relation to Islam. So we had made the same error. And so this gave us information so that I could know that what Colin was saying, I could see where he was departing from Miller's rules. All right, and this has to do with understanding the typical nature of a line and, and also understanding when we look at something and we try to apply it literally. So we need to know how to do that. And, and we learn that by looking at the mistakes of the Millerites, the conclusions that they had drawn when they weren't strictly following the, the rules that Miller had given. So, 
So on that date, we now had this message. And, and we, what we say the darkness is, I mean, the darkness is specifically what? What did we say that it was? Because remember, this is left over from Cicero's message, right? Because this is a repeat. So Cicero, Parminder's message. And, and so we, we've characterized it in different ways. So how would we characterize the darkness that exists when the message of December 25th, 2021 arrives? So what's the darkness? Somebody must know. Can you give a guess? I, I, I was a bit distracted. What what was your question again? What was the darkness that was a, that's dealing with this history? And proceeding the trap, the trap, the darkness of trap. Oh, no. no, 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 I, I don't think so. Um, think, this is more so. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I was babbling and I didn't notice my mic was on because it's a repeat, it's a repeat of history, right. Yeah, right. A reiteration. That was it. Okay. So, so what is this darkness? Well, if it's a reiteration, uh, is it the same darkness that was okay. before, or is this a new darkness? This okay, it's, it's the same. Dark it's a new darkness. Well, it's related to the previous darkness of Parminder, right? So, right. what is how we relate to each other in study? Right. Okay, so, okay. Um, we're not very, we're not very um, kind to one another in studies. Right, so we remember that the tribes represent all these personalities. Different, that is what we discussed. The different characters, um, which, you know, represents our attitude in a movement. So we have Zed. Zebulun and Naphtali are the only ones that uh, jeopardy their lives, right? Right. So, so and and part of this thing is that we have morose. Morose is do nothing, right? So we are being called to action here on December 25th, 2021. We're being called to study together, right? That's really the call. That's the message. And we have been pulling in all these different directions, just self-interest, right? And, and we've read some spirit of prophecy statements to that regard. This is the problem with the church. This is the problem with this movement. We're not united, right? So we pull in all these different directions. And, and we can see that primarily this message has been about, um, we need to pull together. We need to go to the upper room. Right. We see this all the way through the study of understanding the lines, especially when we get to the book of Judges. Um, and Colin presents a, a time frame because of his understanding of the Trump prediction that's going to lead us to January 11th, 2023. Right. So I put on this line um, that you see there, I put January 11th as the second angel's message arrived because I believe a second message arrives there. I also have November 24th, 2022, and I'm putting that as the empowerment of the first message. And that is 
Colin makes this prediction about Trump. Um, that prediction fails. And in our study, um, when we get to November 24th, we notice this 2,688 days, right? Which is an application for the extension of time. That is going to April 5th, 2030. So that's why I put that as the third angel arriving. So we, in a sense, have these time predictions. Neither of them are particularly time predictions. That is, Colin is not predicting January 11th, 2023 as any fulfillment date, but his line suggests it. So it, it is a symbolic relation um, uh, relationship to his prophecy, right? And then we see this with April 5th, 2030. We have all of these symbols that point us to that. We have no event for that. We have no idea what it means, but it does relate symbolically to these lines. And so that's why it's there. Um, now, I didn't put anything for when this message is formalized. There are some suggestions that, that possibilities, but we need to see these from the lines themselves. Um, so, so we have a darkness and that darkness has to do with us. We are the darkness. Our characters are the darkness. Our attitudes about others are the darkness. Our gossip, our envy, our self-seeking, our holding our opinions as greater than those of others, seeing ourselves as better than others. And, and this is really clearly manifest on December 25th, 2021 that there is no unity in the movement. The movement is divided. Because you think about it, we, we just, we had this 777 day structure and we get to December 25th, 2021 and no one is interested in meeting together and discussing all of this past history and what these lines mean. very telling yeah it, to me it was sort of remarkable that there just was no interest now a lot of it had to do with me in the sense that there's this prejudice against me and i'm the one asking this but no one was doing it otherwise right i mean they're not saying we should all get together or we need to have a special meeting on that day nobody's nobody's considering it important Right. It's just it's just. Yeah, you know, it happens to be this day, but, you know, nobody's really talking about it. We're not trying to understand it. Um, and so that's what happens on that day. And so we can see that we have all these tribes that have all of these symbols relating to our message, some more than others. And that message of direct Deborah and Barak. Is is basically being ignored, except for symbolically Zebulun and Naphtali, right? And, and their involvement has to do with understanding truth, presenting truth, right? So there's a whole bunch of symbols that, that we related to with Zebulun and Naphtali. So they come, whatever, it symbolizes those that come to study. And so, uh, so we begin, you know, studying. We, we start to look at it on uh, December, whatever it is. Uh, is it December 26th? Um, I'm just going to make sure I got this right. So, so we, we come to study because we want to understand the truth. Right, that that's the whole point of studying. And it's gonna be on December 26, 2021 that we begin the understanding the lines study, right? So now we have this increase of knowledge and this increase of knowledge is this knowledge of understanding the lines. Now, you know, and so what would we put as the formalization of this? Now, we could have put November 24th, 2022 as the formalization. 
and we could have put, you know, December uh, uh, 25th as the empowerment, and maybe that's that's better. But would there be anything else we would put as the formalization of this message? I mean, we could put December 26, 2021 as the formalization. That is the next day, but I don't know if that may make sense to people. Is there some symbol that we could use to understand where we place these formalizations? So that's what we want to look at right now is we want to look at how we, because we got to the first angel arriving and we want to see about the formalization and the empowerment. So November 24th might go as the formalization and December 25th might be the empowerment because on December 25th, we're going to have another invitation that mirrors the one earlier right so that may be the case but but let's look at the verses so we know we have uh the warning that's given to morose and so we're not we're just marking that there right so there's there's this curse that's given curse you morose right uh curse you bitterly that's going to be a doubling there and that's in verse 23, right? Um, Curse ye bitterly, bitterly the inhabitants thereof, because they came not to the help of the Lord, to the help of the Lord against the mighty, right? Um, and so, so we're just saying that that is a curse that's pronounced there on December 25th, 2021. In a sense, it's a close of probation, right? That is, there are many people who close their probations on December 25th, 2021. They have no more interest in the movement, um, right? And that, that would include the December 6th, 2020 people, all the people who've been studied. Now, I'm not saying that individually we can know that somebody's probation is closed, but we can say symbolically that, that that's a close of probation. But we also have a blessing, right? So we have a curse, and then we have a blessing. Blessing above, Blessed above woman shall Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite, be. Blessed shall she be above the woman in the tent. Okay, so we have a cursing and a blessing. So what does that tell us? Representation of Leviticus 26. Yeah, Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy 28. It's the blessings and the curses. Ebal and... Um, Garrison, right? That Ebal being the curse, the mountain of the curses, and Garrison being the mount of blessing. And this situation that you're referring to here from verse 524 is also the beginning of the seventh stanza. Okay, so it's the seventh stanza of, of the poem. Of the song, yes. Um, now, so there are some things here that, um, I'm trying to remember what this was. okay so i'll come back to some of these other things that i haven't sorted out yet um so you have a cursing and a blessing right so this reminds us of leviticus 26 um we also have this this word uh, tent, we know the 168, that re represents the number of hours in a week. Uh, so blessed shall she be above women in the tent. So the tent being 
a symbol of a week. And we know that that relates to uh, Deborah, right? Because in Deborah, her name is one six. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, just in here. I know it's got the three in there. Yeah, so one six eight three. So it's it's got the same three digits as the word tent. And if we take one sixty eight times three, we get five oh oh four, which divided by two is two fifty two. So it's a representation again of the twenty five twenty. Right. Of course, the week of Christ. Okay. Um, so this, uh, just Angela's note, uh, the last day of the feast, end of the priest's line, December 25th, 2021, in Christ's invitation in John 7, 37 and 38. Uh, and your invitation to study together, which is rejected as Christ was by many. And... Uh, so continuing division, lack of reception, skeptics look at Christ's pedigree, pedigree and disdained him as some look at Theodore's personality and disdain him. Yes. Well, <clears throat> and, you know, just this thing about uh, personality. I mean, I understand I am who I am. There's certain aspects of, of who people are. Everyone, if you look at us, there's a good side to our personality and a bad side. Right there, there is two sides of a corn to a personality, and we need to focus upon when it comes to people on what God is doing in that person. So, for every strength we have, uh, there is a weakness. So, somebody, let's say, who's very particular and detailed, um, they can maybe be overly. Uh, detailed in the sense that they can, you know, not see uh, uh, the forest for the trees, right? So, you know, and that's just an example. There's all kinds of things that you, when you have a strength, there is a weakness attached to it that is on the off opposite side of that, right? Would people agree with me on this this analysis of person personalities? You know, there's there's introverts can be really good at spending time studying, but maybe not so good at um, interacting with others. Now, you can never use these as an excuse for our behavior. Right. right. So so one of the things that that we should do this is something I've started a long, long time ago. I recognized my weaknesses in dealing with people, and I've worked my entire life trying to learn how to interact with others. And people, some people say I'm improving, which is nice, nice to say. But it's 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 not an excuse. I can never use it as an excuse. I can't say, well, this is just my personality. People just better accept me as I am. No, I work extremely hard at figuring out how to communicate to people. And God put me in situations as an introvert where I had to deal with people all the time. You know, being an artist, selling art door to door, um, you know, being a musician, having to sell music door to door, owning a guitar store, having to deal with customers all the time. And of course, teaching guitar, having to deal with people all the time. Plus, I always taught Sabbath school and in sermons, but constantly and and was justifiably criticized all the time. I always accepted that valid criticism. But we also need to recognize just as we can't use it as an excuse for our, our personality, for our own actions, we can't use it as an excuse to reject what someone is saying. Right. Either what they're saying is true or not. And we, we don't, accept or reject truth based upon whether we like a person. Either something is true or it is not. And, 
And I may not like a person a certain way, but that doesn't mean they're a bad person. It just may mean their personality sort of clashes with my personality. Like I don't particularly like loud people, for instance, you know, um, you know, I like people to be careful in their speech, but I like them to be open as well, right? So, you know, there's lots of things I like about certain types of people and other people I don't, but never should I use that as a reason for rejecting what someone's saying. And so we can look at all these personalities that the disciples had, they clashed, but they came together in the upper room, united with a purpose recognizing their own weakness and what they had done wrong, not what the other person had done wrong. And God could then pour upon them the Holy Spirit. And one, one of the things we know is that in order for us to receive the blessing, um, we need to, we need to understand this, this message in a personal way that's going to bring about a conversion. So there are those that are cursed because they do nothing, but JL does something, right? And, and she's a woman that's blessed. Now Morose is a city, right? A town, we don't know where it is, uh, but it has inhabitants, right? And they receive a curse because they did not come to the help of the Lord. And, and it's possible that, you know, this city was right. Maybe it doesn't mention it anywhere else. So we don't we don't know. But they had probably an opportunity to uh, capture Sisera and put him to death. But instead, it's going to be this woman, this church. And it's JL, uh, which is a... Um, a gazelle or something like that, right? Or mountain goat, right? Now she's the wife of Heber. We went through all that. Um, but she shall be blessed above all women in the tent, right? So that tent represents this, this tabernacle, right? Of course, tent, tabernacle. Uh, in God's church, right? But it also represents the week of Christ because of the Hebrew number. So, so we would place all of this at December 25th, 2021, right? Is that what we would do? We're just going to take all of this is talking about this conflict that happens on December 25th, 2021, and the blessing and the curses that are mentioned. So it's referring back to this past history. It's bringing us to the end of the 777 structure. And it's giving us that information. So now Sisera asks water, but she gives him milk. So what is the sig significance of that? And not just milk, she brought forth butter in a lordly dish. What's happening there? So what's milk? Well, desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may um, grow thereby. Um, right. We'll have milk um, uh, in, in the context of um, Isaiah 28. Don't we refer to, to milk as um, the spiritual, um, basically, the, um, First foods that you need to eat. So it's, it's milk is related to spiritual food, right? Yeah. Yeah. So somebody asks for water. Water would be the Holy Spirit, right? Yes. Sir. 
So, so we saw this, we saw that there was this call for, we want to have the Holy Spirit. We want to have all this truth, all of this light just given to us. But we're going to, this message is going to place all of these truths into a very simple, understandable manner. That is, I believe that that happened. I believe that people wanted something, but they got something else. What they got was milk. But do they receive this, really? Because she brought forth butter in a lordly dish. This is now... Um, now, if you know about milk, you, you can take milk, you can separate out the cream. And then once you separate out the cream, uh, you can take that and you can churn it. And it will separate um, the whey from the fat. And so the fat there is what we call butter. Now, here in this case, of course, it's curdled milk or cheese or butter, right? So it can mean different things. Uh, when it comes to nomenclature, it's not always quite clear what they're referring to. Um, but it's got the same root as 2346, and 2346 is curd or butter. So it's probably some form of, of milk that's been processed in some way, right? So not only are they getting milk, but they're getting milk that has been processed or prepared. And it's placed in a lordly dish. Now, lordly just means large, gallant, glorious, goodly, mighty, noble, principal, worthy, wide, powerful, excellent, famous, right? There's all these different words. Now, we do have it as 117. Now, we know uh, 11 times 7 is 77, right? Uh, we know if we took 11 times 17, it'd be 187. So you could divide it that way, 11 and then 17. Um, so this would represent all of the truths that have been prepared and put and set in order for, for God's people, for this movement to understand the truth. And prior to July 18, we had... Regular studies, um, I can't remember how long they were, but we were doing a lot of studies um, from April something till in 2020. We started in April doing, uh, I did a whole series of videos, right, on all these different topics. So, so we had everything put into a package. And, and I would say that this would be milk. So we're going to start that. Um, well, starts when the pandemic starts. Um, so as a question with this particular um, word is there any significance using the rule of first mention with where it first occurs which which word lordly hebrew 117 well, yeah, the rule of first mention should apply. So that's going to be first mentioned in um, Exodus 15.10. Okay, yeah, Exodus 15.10, yep. And thou didst blow with thy wind, the sea covered them, they sank as lead in the mighty water. So that's going to be, uh, we got mighty, and we got waters there. Now this is the <clears throat> this is the song the, after oh, the children of Israel came out of Egypt. Yeah, the song of Moses. Right. Okay. 
So you have that there. Okay. So in this in this type of situation, since she is bringing him butter in a lordly dish, mm -hmm. is she giving reverence to God or is she giving reverence to Sisera? Um, I don't quite understand your question. What no. <clears throat> Exodus 15.10 is giving reference to the mighty waters, the mighty waters that destroyed the Egyptians because God allowed this to happen. Yeah. So here she is. She is providing him first he asks for water and she gives him milk. But she goes further and gives butter in this lordly dish. So is there a significance with this? I mean, especially since we're looking at Judges, <laughs> Judges 525, which is just another portion of, of the 777. Right. Right. So that's an important point. And um, so when we go to this this verse here, um, I mean, the mighty waters, that's the waters of of the Red Sea. Right. Agreed. So they're going to be destroyed by the waters of the Red Sea. Um, so this is something that ends up. Uh, being their demise, right? It One is it's a way, a pathway is made in the waters for God's people to pass over, right? The Red Sea. But that right. is going to cause the end of uh, Pharaoh and his, his armies. So, I mean, this is, in a sense, what you see happening in Judges 5.25. Um, this is truth. What she's presenting is truth. But it's going to be the end of Sisera. Whether it has something to do with the last meal, I don't, I guess, symbolically. Um, so what was your point, Dwight? What was your question? I, I still don't understand it. Here again, as we're comparing verse with verse. Lordly dish, there, there's a reason that this word was being chosen. There was a reason in this song that Deborah was inspired to choose this word in line with what was done in the Song of Moses. Mm -hmm. But you were putting them as like opposites or something. Well, <clears throat> in this situation, one is directed by God. The other here is being brought to a man that does not deserve the adoration but is being treated as if he did, as if he did. I'm just, I'm just trying to puzzle this thing through. Okay, I guess I see what you're seeing. Um, but I just say that this, this is in both cases. I mean, the Lord we hear. It's, it, it's just that truth is being offered. Was truth offered to Pharaoh? Most definitely. Right. So he rejected it. Same thing here. Truth right. is brought to Sisera. He rejects it. Right. But he wants water. Right. He just asks for water. Because there are people, they want the Holy Spirit. Well, <clears throat> would but they, don't, but they don't want milk. Right. 
They don't want the first principles of the oracles of God. And they don't, even though they claim they want to have the truths put into a package that they can understand, when that is done, they refuse it, right? They, they're not benefited by it because they approach it as skeptics. They're already biased against it. And okay. no matter what you present, they're not going to accept it. No matter how much you simplify it, they're not going to exercise their their intellect to understand it. Would would this have been a situation where Cicero was looking to be refreshed? Well, yes, that's why he's asking for water. Okay. And yet, <clears throat> in some Arab cultures, the milk or even even here the butter which could be significant because in some arab cultures you you have them looking more for for what is what we would call buttermilk especially that which gets agitated in a leather bag and it's <clears throat> it's something that's esteemed for its refreshing properties. Mm -hmm. So JL is going over and above. Yeah. She is trying to give refreshment, but in this in this type of situation as you're pointing out the water being that of the holy spirit yet he's not receiving of the holy spirit right and we've seen this happening within the movement where there are those that are portending to be receiving of the Holy Spirit, but just like those that have remained in the holy place after Christ has left, they're receiving a spirit entirely from the adversary. So could this could this be another indication of, of that situation? Well, yeah. Now, um, yeah, I think that's that's sort of the idea. Um, I mean, people are being offered truth because God has to offer light to everyone, even those that are going to reject it. Um, so. You know, Angela directed us to 2 Kings 21, 13. I believe that was because of the word dish. I don't know if that's why. Um, now, you know, we have uh, 2 Kings 21, uh, 12, and 13. We know 21 times 12 is 252. 21 times 13 is 273, right? So we're familiar with that math. And, and this, of course, is about the 2520. Right? Stretching over Jerusalem, the line of Samaria, and the plummet of the house of Ahab, I will wipe Jerusalem as man wipeth the dish, wiping it and turning it upside down. Um, Okay, so, so this is the truth that's being presented. You know, this idea that it's a dish. Get back here. So, um, 
she's she's presenting she's giving him milk when he asks for water and she brings this this milk in this in a way that it is processed it's 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 presented in a way that's clear and understandable right and and i think this Three. And this relates to that period since July 18 to December 25th, 2021. We had clear presentations of these truths that anyone could look at. Now, there was a complaint that we didn't have that. You know, that it was all too complicated. You know, we need it. We need it spelled out in simple terms so that even a child could understand it. So your stuff is too complicated. But that's a misquote of the spirit of prophecy and, of course, a misunderstanding of the Bible. Because we know the gospel, it should be so simple that a child can understand it. But there are things in the Bible that require wisdom. They require study, effort, that you have to dig for buried treasure. And so when people say, I only want to hear what only a child could understand, I want to have everything presented to me in 15 minutes. And if I can't understand it, then I don't want it. We know that that's not from God. So, so we have this, this verse, it's, it's, again, it's repeating the history of what, was, what had happened. Now, the question that I have is, can we take this and can we say that this history was repeated in a line? That is, we took this message and we presented it again to this movement since December 25th, 2021, and that we presented it in a lordly dish. That, that is the question. So can we say whether we put, you know, December 26th here, I'm gonna put it here, just, this is just a trial, right? Just, it's not like December 26th, 2021. We can say here, they're going to be presented milk, which is now butter in a lordly dish. That is, we're going to go back. We're going to try to understand the lines. We start that the day after this message arrives. Now, we could just say that that is the increase of knowledge, right? We're going to have this increase of knowledge. And we could just say that's the increase of knowledge. It's from December 26, 2021 to November 24, 2022. November 24, 2022 being the formalization of that message when we have that light regarding this application for the additional extension of time, the two, 2,688 days to April 5th, 2030. Or we could have some other date or some other event that we would have as the formalization. But what we can say is that here in this story, which is the song, it's going to repeat what happened and what happened before that's being repeated in the song is happening again in the movement. Is that reasonable? Because we did it with the song of Deborah here, going from November 9th to January 11th, 2023. So we did that November 9th part. And then what we're saying is that uh, this repeat of history here, because this is all the history in this movement, um, and then we have the third angel arriving January 11th, 2023. But now this fourth angel arriving is this section of the song of Deborah and Barak, repeating this history, really going from December 25th 
again, repeating it from that, that point of time, right? So to December 25th uh, to January 11th, that one year, that 383 days is, is that repeat of history. So it just, it goes over the same history. So we already have it in the first part of the Song of Deborah and Barak. Now we could just say the Song of Deborah and Barak, this is just, um, see, part of the problem here is this is December 25th. That's the second angel empowered here. So we're saying that, you know, this is that part of the Song of Deborah and Barak. And maybe we could have just done this line differently, right? We could have just said, well, that, that part of Song of Deborah and Barak just leads us to December 25th, 2021, and, and not go beyond that. But we have lots of reasons why we did the line this way. And so this part of the Song of Deborah and Barak seems to be just a repeat of that last part of the Song of Deborah and Barak, but it's zooming in and giving us more detail. Is this reasonable? After evaluating, I would have to say yes. Okay. So now, if we're going to put this as December 26, 2021, is there any symbols in this verse um, that that would would help us to understand that so so we're saying judges 525 brings us to december 25th 2021 um but then it says she put her hand to the nail and her right hand to the workman's hammer and the hammer and with the hammer she smote sisera she smote off his head when she had pierced and stricken through his temples. Now, of course, originally we apply this to July 18th. But here we have verse 26. And so we can say that 525 re refers to December 25th. Can 526 refer to December 26th? Or is there some other symbol that we would have that would tie us to, to December 26? Or is this some other date that's being referenced? So we know on 525, or 525 is representing a message given, right? And, and we can say that we can place this at December 25th, 2021. So this is the first angel's message arriving. Where she, he asked water, she gave him milk. And then she brought forth butter in a lordly dish. Now, are we going to put that as December 26th, or are we going to just take this whole thing? She brought forth this butter, but then she put her hand to the nail. So in, in dealing with this nail, what did we come to understand about the nail? It's a peg, a paddle, a pin, a stake. Nail in a sure place. December is five months after July, so Judges 525 and 26 uh, could be December 25th and 2020 and 26. Yeah, so I'm just taking that if if 525 is referring to December 25th then 526 can refer to December 26th. And so when we begin this study of understanding the lines, 
Can we say that this is a formalization of this message? Or is it an empowerment of the message? Or is it something else, right? Now, I think there's a good reason to put it as uh, the formalization of the message. But anybody have any thoughts on that, that what Angela presented is good? You know, we're going to also have the mother of Sisera. We're going to have to figure out how that relates. She looked out the window, cried through the lattice. Why is his chariot so long in coming? Why tarry the wheels of his chariot? So, um, and then at her feet, he bowed, he, he fell, he laid down at her feet, he bowed, he fell. Where he bowed, there he fell down dead, right? So we have this, she brings him this butter. She takes the nail, puts it through his temples. She smote off his head when she had pierced and stricken through his temples. At her feet he bowed, he fell. He lay down. At her feet he bowed, he fell. Where he bowed, there he fell down, dead. And then we have the mothers of Sisera looking out of the window, crying through the lattice, saying, why is his chariot so long? In coming, why tarry the wheels of his chariot? Now, we know we could apply this to uh, the history after July 18th, but we're saying that history is repeated in this movement since December 25th, 2021, right? That's what we're saying that this is. It's a repeat. It's something that's happening internally within the movement of, of what has survived that 777 structure, right? Because we're going to have Sisera, Parminder's message, begin it, and now his message has still continued, his spirit, his attitude. Okay, Revelation 3, verse 9. Um, what's Revelation 3, 9, Angela? It says, uh, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Okay, so that's the bowing down at of, of, of the feet, at the feet of Christ. Now, of course, this is dealing with a message, right? Um, now we have uh, feet. This is a... Uh, a word that occurs in the King James, according to Strong's, Regal, uh, 246 times. Um, bowed uh, occurs 45 times. Nafal occurs 439 times. So these are pretty common words, right? Down, he laid down 251 times. And, and you're just going to have these words repeated several times. Bowed again, fell down, yet dead, shadad. Um, it's not the usual word for, for dead, but um, it occurs 57 times. It often means spoiled, so it doesn't usually mean dead. It's the only time it's translated it is dead. Um, so wasted or spoiled is more common. Because uh, usually dead, you have moat, which is a uh, common word for death. Okay, so, so we have these words. They occur very commonly. Now, the idea of feet, it means to fall uh, or or put foot or leg of God, anthropomorphic, seraphim, cherubim, idols, animal. So tables have legs or feet, according to the pace of three times. You can refer to three times, or feet or paces. 
comes from 727 Regal, 7270, July 27th as a symbol. <clears throat> okay. Bowed, to bend the knee, bow, sink down on one's knee, kneel down to rest, right, to crouch, to tilt, to lean, to cause to bow. And fell. So this is to be prostate, fall down in death, cause to fall. That's the different forms. So hithpel, that's if you do it to yourself, hithful, if you cause it to happen to someone else. And the call form is just the normal form of um, falling, right, to fall. Okay. And... Uh, then we have this word, he fell down. To lie down, to lodge, to make, to lie down. Then we have the dead. So, okay. So can we take this, verse 27, and place it somewhere on a line? Right. So my suggestion, you guys aren't helping me too much. A little bit you're helping me, but. <clears throat> so when does this message of December 25th lie down? Is that still future? Has it happened? So the one that's being addressed by the darkness. So you have this darkness. You have a message presented on December 25th, a few messages, a confirmation of the 777 structure. You have a message that Colin presents, which relates to Trump. And that part of it, that Trump's going to be reelected, he makes some predictions about what's going to happen and puts a time frame. It's going to be November 8th, right, 2022. But there's going to be this. Now he says it wasn't a prediction, it was just a speculation, you know, a suggestion. But it definitely is a prediction that fails, right? Whether it's speculation or a suggestion, whatever, it didn't happen. Right? It wasn't, um, the Republicans didn't just run the table. Um, So, so do we put December 26 in this message of understanding the lines? Do we put it as an increase of knowledge? I mean, it's there as part of an increase of knowledge. Um, do we just put that whole period of that study? Do we take Everything November? Everything you said so far is true. I mean, <clears throat> we, we, after December 25th, I mean, there was lots of life that was exposed. Okay. So we could, you know, we could put December 26, this study of understanding the lines as an increase of knowledge. We could put November 24th as a formalization. And I think that's actually much better because when it comes to the message that this movement, this study group has had, right, within this movement, we begin it on December 25th, it arrives. And then there's this increase of knowledge. We study through understanding the lines. When we get to November 24th, and we have the 2,688 days to April 5th, 2030, um, this is after the failure of Colin's prediction. And so now we can formalize the message. Now this message needs to be empowered. So if I did this, I could put the empowerment of the message as December 25th. Now, December 25th, we begin this study in 2022. Um, so this was the same time that the invitation was invoked. This is another invitation, right? So these... 
this is another invitation. And this invitation is we need to look at the lines simply presented, right? So how simple it was, I don't know, but we, we completed that study uh, last Sunday. But we gave an invitation. This invitation is rebuffed. I mean, I don't know, maybe there's some people who watched a few of the studies. I'm not certain, you know. No participation though. Definitely no participation in, in any of these studies. No one is, almost no participation even in our group. It's not, it's not the best time to have a study Sunday afternoon. But, you know, for some people it's convenient. But we didn't get any participation. Um, but we made this invitation to this study. And we've already marked it on the lines before. When we get to January 11th, 2023, Collins. Wait, 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 just a second. Hold it. Yep. Uh, 2021. Was, did Bonnie come in after that and uh, go through her? Okay. So, yeah. Five so, hours or whatever it was. Yeah. So, in 2022, Bonnie's going to come to a study, right? That's what you're referring to. Yeah, yeah, that's it, 2022. And this is, and this is a study on um, uh, dealing with Trump, right? So this is going to be the presidents of the United States. I do 23 studies on that. Right. And, and we were trying to figure out when that was. And there's going to be a study on April 8th, 2022, number study number 14. Right. So on April 8th, 2022, we have this study. Are you looking through the YouTube or something? Because it's yeah. going to be a really long presentation. Yeah, it's it's uh, three hours and 39 minutes. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. And, and 31 seconds. Okay, so that study, Bonnie's going to come to that study. She's going to lay into an attack on me as a person. Uh, but there's not really... Um, what was the date again? April 8th, 2022. So that's that's my wedding anniversary with Heidi. So that's going to be our, our ninth anniversary that, uh, but it, it's part of the lines, right? I so, like how, um, God marks things out. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and it's not, you know, I'm not attacking Bonnie. I'm just saying that what she did was instead of, she, she brought up a lot of objections, objections one after the other. And I answered those objections, right? In answered them from the scriptures, showed her how we what what she was objecting to wasn't something that the movement, um, you know, that 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 the things that I was presenting were consistent with what we had taught in the past. And, and this is pro this is obviously prior to December twenty fifth, twenty fourteen. Pro prior to what? Uh, the date that we you put established there at first angel of power. Yeah. So, I mean, if you want to put that as a formalization, um, yeah. So you're saying that, you know, you would put April, you could put April 8th in here. Um, Is that what you're saying? As a I mean, you know, the, she was the only person that responded, basically. Uh, and everything that she talked about, we addressed, basically. So it, it, it could actually be a formalization, but it was only to the one person. Um, but it was recorded and uh, uh, made public record. Yeah. And it, and it was the attitude that we would see in many, many in the Canadian and American groups regarding right. what, what I had said. Now, the thing is, we, this is, um, study number 14 in my response to what Colin had presented on December 25th, 2021, right? So 
what we did is we did a very thorough examination of what Colin had presented, looked at the pioneers' understanding of things. Now, now there is another date. Um, so in these studies, we also do have Colin. So Colin does uh, address these studies as well. What do you mean? Well, he does come to the study of the presidents of the United States at a, at a certain point. So Bonnie's not the only one. Okay, I know what you're talking about. Okay. Um, now I'm trying to find where this is. Um, because what we're going to have is he came, yeah, he came one time, Iran says. I think he came twice, actually. Um, but uh, we have the 391 words. Um, and I'm trying to find out when that is. So we get from uh, we get from um, Colin. So I have to find this here. Hmm. I don't know where it is. Um, should probably have these things memorized. I don't know why it's so hard to find, but it's going to be in uh 2022 it's going to be early on there's going to be this email sent to me um here i'll find it i know to find it okay, so i can just search for that um so this may be a part of it so we just need to now this is the he forwards to me 391 words in five paragraphs. He sends it to me. It's a quote, but he, he, he refuses to tell me who said it. Right? So I don't know. I assume it's Jeff. I assume Jeff sent uh, an email to someone and, call and copies it and sends it to me. Um. So that is going to be um, on uh, February 12th, 2022. So is that significant? I think it. I think it plays very well in the structure. I I agree. I agree with Ron, but I think this plays directly to the structure. So, well, one is that we know already is that there is a presentation on uh, uh, February twelfth, twenty twenty two. Right. So, so if we go from December 25th, that's going to be Odilio's presentation. Right. So Odilio does a presentation on that day. 
as well as calling um, Colin coming to the study. No, not coming to the study, but sending me the 391 words, which I'm then going to uh, do presentations on. So we already have that, but this February 12, 2022 is not referring to Odilia's study, even though it occurs on that date. That's going to be Colin. Okay. Well, we'll just say it's the 391 words. Oops. I chuckle every time I hear that. Right. So the 391 words are sent to me on this date. So why would that be significant then as a formalization, if we're going to put it there? So we're just trying different things. And it's in five paragraphs, right? So we've got 391 words. Can we multiply that by the date? Get something? Well, I don't know about that. I mean, February 12th, we already have a symbol, right? It's 212. It's, yeah, it's 2012. That's the only thing I have it actually referenced to. Yeah, that's what it represents, 2012. Represents to the mind date. So, um, so 390 words in five paragraphs. It's also the prime is 1301, the 212th prime. We know that relates to Barak because that's the, uh, the Hebrew number for Barak, 1301. So, so we can relate this to the message of Barak. So the message of Barak is being responded to with this 391 words in five paragraphs, which I assume is Jeff. Colin never denies that it's Jeff, but he won't tell me that it is. But as far as I know, Jeff's the only one who could have written it. And, and Jeff is responding to um, an accusation that, that Colin's prediction is not following Miller's rules. So somebody um, is, is responding to, to this. Right. So it starts out, it is not a denial of Miller's rules to apply Revelation 17 as we have always done. And in no way did I suggest that we can't apply Revelation 17 as we have always done. In fact, I said we still need to. But we need to realize that it is an application that is not the direct application of Revelation 17. That when we look at what the pioneers understood, we start to see that there are things that we missed, right? That was what was said. Uh, who's the I? I where? It is not well, a denial of those rules. That, to apply in that sentence, it, it said, uh, no, it I say. never said or something in that net. No. Read, no. That, read that statement again. It is not a denial of Miller's rules to apply Revelation 17 as we have always done. That's how it starts. Yeah, continue. What's the next word? Line upon line, every fact has its... Oh, line upon line. I, 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 I thought it said I in there. Line upon line, every fact has its bearing. Verse 3 through 6 identifies where John is when he receives the vision. You're suggesting that revelation must be applied on time when John received the vision, but John was told to write what was 
what is and what is to come. Miller applied chapter 13 and 17 in agreement with all the light he had been given, but that did not include the USA or the UN as the sixth and seventh kingdom. Verse three through six explained that John was placed in 1798 when the USA was rising, right? And it's going to go on, just pr present our... Okay, our I, I thought somebody identified this. I thought at somebody at some point, somebody said, or that the writer said, I never, or something in that nature. And I... Yeah. I, I and then, and then it would therefore behoove all to weigh what it means that at this point in history, someone is openly attacking the foundations. And, and that's the last sentence of, of the, in the fifth paragraph. Uh, did you ever send that one out? Yes. Uh, yeah. You have it in a, a PDF form. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, the point is, you know, maybe it isn't Jeff, but it sure seems like Jeff, because he says, I've argued from the beginning of the message that the strongest proof in support of what we teach is that the sequence of the six verses of Daniel 11 is identical to the sequence of Revelation 13 and 17. So if he's saying, I have argued from the beginning of the message, it must be Jeff. Okay, so that's where I picked it up at. I, yeah, I, I hadn't read that, though. So I don't know. Maybe it was in my memory. Maybe. <clears throat> so anyway, the point is, uh, we can take we can take these 391 words and five paragraphs and put it as a formalization. Can we? Is there something in? I mean, our time is up, but um, so in these verses. Um, now, we had said, you know, December 26th is this increase of knowledge. That's where we're going to put it then. At her feet, he bowed, he fell, he lay down. At her feet, he bowed, he fell. Where he bowed, there he fell down dead, right? So we're saying that when Colin sends that to me, this is being addressed, right? If, if that's the formalization, if 527 is the form it's formalization. kind of what it sounds like to me. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm open for other stuff, but it, it sounds pretty good. Okay. Now, do we have anything here that ties us to the three 391 in this verse? I'm sorry, which, which, which verse are we looking for? Verse 27. More to Revelation 17 or anything like that. <clears throat> sorry, I didn't hear that. Revelation 17 also. So that, that's the question, you know, is if we're going to place this at February 12th, 2022, is there anything that we can take those 391 words and, and address that? So that's what we're going to have to think about for tomorrow. Okay. So I, I don't know. I don't have the answer to that. All I know is we have Judges 5, verse 27. And we have this 391 words in five paragraphs. And we're going to mark that as February 12th. Is that reasonable based upon the symbols that are here? Right? So... We'll come back to this tomorrow then. Okay, so let's close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you once again for the time of study. 
And we pray for your continued guidance in our personal study, in our walk with you as we face the challenges of the day. We ask for your angels to watch over us, for your Holy Spirit to speak to our heart, and for you to use us to your glory. Help us to witness to those around us, and we pray for all those in the movement and all those searching for truth. Thank you for correcting us, and we ask for this continued work upon our own hearts. Be with each person, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.